with us through Facebook Live. Uh, we are so happy that you are part of us and are able to join us in that way. A uh, few announcements. Dina Ishler's coordination is this afternoon at 4 o'clock. It is at the cathedral. Uh, a number of us are going. It will be a marvelous, marvelous event. So we're very happy about that. We do have a present for her from our parish. Fortunately, it has not arrived yet, so that's unfortunate, but it's a beautiful white stole that she'll be able to wear at Christmas time. And she will be with us on Christmas Eve at the four o'clock service. So I think we can present it then, and she can wear it, and it'll be really, really beautiful. So we're very happy and excited about that. Um, we have um, two announcements. One is that the holiday market yesterday was marvelous. All I can tell you is everybody who sent emails and I was over there early, it was just so much fun and so wonderful. So we're really, really happy about that. And because there will be a break in the distribution of food due to the Gleaning Project who provides us the boxes, we are going to have a meal prepared for the people who come to receive boxes on the 20th of this month, of course. And so if you would like to contribute we're also there, we're having these wonderful people make chili and all of that, but we also want to have canned goods to give away. So if you would like to contribute and bring some canned goods next week, that would be marvelous. That'll just enable others to continue to be fed when our regular offering is not going to be available because of the cleaning. Uh, we also, the quilters of course have been very busy and been making beautiful, beautiful things. And there are some things that are left and they are in the PLC in our parish hall. There's a price on each one, and if you would like to buy one, you can put money in a, in a in this like, like little tin. So that's always an exciting thing. We will have a, a children's sermon today, so we will invite all the children to come forward um, at a time before the Holy Eucharist. And as always, um, they were delighted that they were part of us and can worship with us. Um, let's see, what else is happening? We have community meal tomorrow. So that's good. And if you are a Christmas angel, if you took an angel to purchase something, if you could bring it in sometime this week, that would be marvelous. Although we don't have a Christmas tree, we have a little tree over in the PLC, and you can put it by that if you would like to. I think one of the most important things to uh, announce is next Saturday, we have a contemplative lessons and carols. It will be beautiful. So I really encourage you to come. Uh, the Cantate Carlisle, we will have members from this choral group here singing the carols. We'll sing some of the carols. It's going to be glorious. So I encourage you to come. That's next Saturday at 5 o'clock. And then Christmas Eve, we have services at 4 and 7. Christmas Day, we worship at 10 and, of course, have our Christmas meal. We have lots of people signing up for the Christ to help at the Christmas meal. Um, but if you would like to do something, please do. We need a few more pies. We need some turkeys, and of course we can always help, uh, we're always happy for people to come and help actually serve and be a part of the actual distribution on Christmas Day. So we're all excited, we have lots of good things happening, and so now let us prepare our hearts for worship. Let us pray. Be present, be present, Lord Jesus Christ, our great high priest, as you were present and made known to the disciples in the breaking of bread. And we pray all this in your holy name.
today we light the first, second, and third candles of the Advent wreath. Each candle has a meaning. The first candle is hope, the second candle is peace, and the third candle is joy. You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and hills will burst into song before you, and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Gracious God, you came to us in human flesh, and you abide with us in the Holy Spirit. Fill us with your joy, and help us shine as a light to the world, through Jesus Christ, who makes our joy complete. Amen. Blessed are you, holy and living one. You come to your people and set them free. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Stir up your power, O 
Lord, and with great might come among us. And because we are sorely hindered by our sins, let your bountiful grace be mercy, grace and mercy speedily help and deliver us through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you in the Holy Spirit be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be oh, I'm sorry. Our shape by faith prayer. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. O oh Lord, we thank you for our parish family and the abundant blessings you have given us. You provide our daily needs, and you make our lives rich in friendship and opportunities to share your love and encouragement with each other. Now we ask your blessing upon a new venture. Help us reach beyond our parish walls and offer your love, encouragement, and healing to our neighbors. May we extend our hands in partnering to create a loving community, our hearts in listening to know and respond to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Be in our midst as we discover new ways to be your hands and feet as we honor the dignity of each person. Let there be joy and laughter rising up from new vegetable gardens and produce stands that will feed everyone who is hungry. Smiles and warm welcomes as we pass each other on the street. Thanksgiving as we see friends who have been in need find ways to rise out of difficulty. May your light of love shine upon us as we become your church beyond the walls and grow your beloved community. All that we have belongs to you, O Lord. May we use it to your glory. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy at singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the speechless sleep, sing, sing for joy. For water shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. The haunt of jackals shall become a swamp, the grass shall become reeds and rushes. A highway shall be there, and it shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not travel in it, but it shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even fools, shall go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come up on it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Let us pray Canticle 15 responsively by whole verse. The Song of Mary, Magnificat. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. 
for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy on them who fear him, he has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm, he has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to help his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy. The promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was at the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the letter, letter of James. Be patient, therefore, beloved, until the coming of the Lord. The farmer waits for the precious crop from the earth, being patient with it until it receives the early and the late rains. You also must be patient. Strengthen your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is near. Beloved, do not grumble against one another, so that you may not be judged. See the judges standing at the doors. As an example of suffering and patience, beloved, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you. 
offer these words in the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. John asked Jesus the question many of us ask, sometimes secretly in the confines of our own heart, or sometimes very vocally, in social media or in public, sometimes to engage others in conversation, though oftentimes denouncing those with a differing opinion. But we want to ask Jesus, are you for real? Are you the one that I have been waiting for? Are you the fulfillment of all that I have yearned for all these years? John asks this in part out of practical concern. John is in, in prison and knows his death is imminent. If Jesus is the Messiah, John can die knowing his followers know Jesus and know Jesus is the Messiah. John also asks this in part out of personal concern. John needs reassurance that his death is not the end of the hope of a new era. And finally, John asks this out of cosmic concern, for Jesus' answer has the potential to change the course of human life as he knew it. And he would be vindicated like the long generations of prophets who had been persecuted or killed because the truth they were proclaiming to the world was unfashionable. So John, as we sometimes do, waits with bated breath, for Jesus to utter these words that we just long to hear. Yes, my beloveds, I am for real. I am the true one that you have been waiting for all your life. My love for you will fulfill all that you have ever yearned for. But of course, Jesus doesn't make it that simple, and for a good reason. John already believed that Jesus was the Messiah. He recognized him immediately in this role when Jesus came to him to be baptized. John heard Jesus' words that John must baptize Jesus to fulfill the scriptures. John saw the dove. John heard the voice of God descending from the heavens, proclaiming Jesus as the Son of God. But Jesus refuses to provide this simple affirmative action answer John desires. Instead, he invites him to take his step, his belief, one step further. Jesus wants John to become a disciple, to follow him, to do what Jesus is doing, to bring healing and reconciliation into the world. And then he wants him to take yet a, the belief one more step and to actually live it, inside and out, with every single breath, with every single cell oriented to embody the truth of God. John talked about the coming reign of God, and Jesus lived it. Jesus invites John and us first to believe, then to follow, and then through our acts of love and mercy to actually embody our faith. Jesus knew that believing and talking about God was good and faithful. And Jesus knew that doing acts of mercy and compassion was good and faithful. And Jesus knew that advocating for God's mission was good and faithful. And Jesus knew experiencing and being the presence of God, embodying the truth of God, was very good. And it was an expression of the fullness of faithfulness. And it was a demonstration of the essence of the love of Christ. Christine Walters Painter, one of my virtual spiritual mentors, explains that the embodiment of God is when the fullness of God enters completely into the life of the world and participants become more than messengers about God, more than advocates on God's behalf, but rather embodiments of the harmony of the world. Now when I say that phrase, harmony of the world, it speaks to me of God's justice, of bringing about shalom, that wonderful, active, peaceful, whole state of union with one another and with God. And so somehow we understand today that we are called to become the glimpses, a living sacrament, an outward and visible sign of the inward grace that is ours 
We are to be examples of the restoration and joy that Jesus brought into the world. Somehow, we are to become visible, audible, encouraging signs for a weary, fearful world. And we are to rejoice. So when we sing Joy to the World, which we always think about as a Christmas hymn, but it's actually an appropriate Advent hymn because it speaks about every heart preparing room for him. We understand that this is one way we can embody the love of Christ by experiencing and sharing joy with other people. So if you find joy wherever and however you find joy, even if you're not going to use the words I'm going to use next, but you can know that you, are, you both believe in and follow Jesus, and that you have somehow embodied and taken within your very being the essence of the holy, and heaven and earth sing of that glory. Now, in Jesus' answer to John, which isn't, oh, yes, by the way, I am the Messiah, Jesus explains to us what it means to embody the presence of God. Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the leopards are cleansed, the deaf hear and the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. That's what it looks like to embody the presence of God. That is where we will find joy. When we provide sight to the blind, which can take the form of advocacy or education that we provide to open people's eyes to the harsh conditions others are living under. We embody God when we enable the lame to walk, when we increase the mobility and agency of those who currently have no escape from their situation. We embody the presence of God when we cleanse lepers, when we fully and joyfully accept into our hearts and lives those who have been ostracized and isolated due to a mental or physical disease or from people's fear of that disease. We embody the presence of Christ when we raise people from the dead by offering and enabling a steady presence as people embrace a new life. And we certainly embody God's presence when we preach good news to the poor, when we give hope away with each box of produce. That's what it looks like when we embody our faith, and that is where we will find joy. So as I read the stories of those who offered the holiday market to our neighbors yesterday, well, joy was just jumping off the page, off of every text, every email, every social media comment. It was just a wonderful thing. And Peter sent me lots of pictures. It was a great deal of joy in the air at Grace Place yesterday. So it is through those events that we embody the presence of the holy. We are somehow doing as Mary calls us to, to turn the world toward justice through our love, and through our friendships. So when there is a fullness in our work, when our hearts just seem to burst forth in song, when we can see joy erupt on the face of the person right next to us because of what we're doing or what our heart is offering, then we are embodying the presence of God as Jesus called forth in his message to John the Baptist. Now Mary, in some ways this is Mary's day because we've read and prayed through the Magnificat today, but Mary, the mother of Jesus, of course embodied the presence of God in a very distinct way. Her body held, nurtured, and offered itself in love and service to the will of God, bearing the Christ child into the world. And perhaps because she had this embodied connection with the holy and because God chose to reach beyond the boundaries of the established order to bring about this renewal through the baby she was about to bear, she immediately understood that this child was about to turn the world toward justice. So in her prophetic prayer, the Song of Mary or the Magnificat, Mary speaks about the intent and the power of God to change the lives of people. And these are people who actually love God already, who love God with all their heart, mind, soul, and body, but are now invited to take their faith one step deeper, becoming a disciple of Jesus, this baby that she's carrying in her womb, and then embody the change that Jesus calls us into. Now, Dietrich, Dietrich Bonhoeffer called the Magnificat the most revolutionary hymn ever sung, 
For in this beautiful prayer, and we get all caught up in this beauty of it, and Mary giving birth to a baby in the Christmas scene, but Mary actually proclaims a God who's going to topple all the powers of the world, who is going to lift up and side with the poor and the powerless and the exploited people. So we know somehow that embodying the presence of God has to mean bringing God's justice into the world. So we hold that strong directive of what embodiment is to look like with Mary's instruction of how to allow the embodiment to happen in our hearts. So I'd like to read you a modern version of the Magnificat, again offered by Christine Walters Paitner as part of her prayer cycle. My soul sings in gratitude. I am dancing in the mystery of God. The light of the Holy One is within me, and I am blessed, so truly blessed. This goes deeper than human, deeper than king. I am filled with awe at love, whose only condition is to be received. The gift is not for the proud, for they have no room for it. The strong and the self-sufficient ones They don't have this awareness. But those who know their emptiness, they can rejoice in love's fullness. It's the love that we are made for, the reason for our being. It fills our innermost heart space and brings to birth in us the Holy One. Now, the words that shimmer for me in that version of the Magnificat, which is equally prophetic and challenging, our gratitude and mystery, blessedness, awe, love, fullness, innermost heart space. So when we open this innermost heart space within and we sing and we pray, O come, O come, Emmanuel, we are suddenly full of all that we ever need, all that we will ever need to change the world. So, of course, this embodiment can look very different for each one of us because God meets each one of us where we are and invites us to be a part of the change. But however we bring God's turning of the world toward justice into the world through our hearts or our lives, Jesus' instruction for us this day, focus on the signs of renewal and abundance that you hear and see in our world. These are the signs that a new era is being birthed. Look for and create moments of liberation for others. Steep yourself in abiding gratitude and love. Find your place of contentment of who you are and who you've been asked to be. And then, most importantly, look for the joy, because that's where you're going to find Christ. So on this third Sunday of Advent, when we ponder the joy inherent in our lives of Christ, regardless of whatever the circumstances are of our lives, I ask you to ponder and discern this question. What makes your heart sing for joy? For within that answer, that's where you will find God. That's where life is changing, That's where life is real. That's where life is about love. Where you are and where you see and can be the embodiment of the Spirit of God. So look around you. Find it. Embody it. Because that love, that joy, is all that matters. Amen. Christ, 
the only Son, Son of God, God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he became from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. Be strong, do not fear. Our God is coming. Confident that our um, waiting is not in vain, let us offer our prayers as we respond. O come, O come, Emmanuel. O come, Emmanuel, free us from the bondage of our sins, our pride and hypocrisy, our greed and self-serving interests that we may know your redeeming love and reveal its liberating joy. Let us pray. O come, O come, Emmanuel. O wisdom from on high, show us the path of the holy way and set our feet upon its joy. Let us pray. O come, O come, Emmanuel. O Lord of might, who gives sight to the blind and opens the ears of those who cannot hear, who heals the sick and raises the dead and brings good news to the poor. Give us a share of your power that we may, we may do the works you do. Let us pray. O come, O come, Emmanuel. O branch of Jesse's tree, we give thanks for our spiritual ancestors by whose faith the lamp of truth illumines the disciples of every age. Let us pray. O come, O come, Emmanuel. O key of David, unlock the doors of oppression and violence that imprisoned humankind and set free those living in the bondage of slavery, the victims of abusive relationships, and those chained by poverty. Let us pray. O come, O come, Emmanuel. O day spring from on high, may the drawn, o, dawn overcome every darkness as your messengers plant the barren land with seeds of hope. And we hold in prayer those dear to our hearts, Ken, Happy, Allie Baker, Sam, Sam Lehoten, Tom, Luann, Bev and Bob, Ann, Ellen, Jan, Buddy Tawari, the Berkram family, Chris and Kathy, Lorenzo, Eric, Kathy, Chester, Randy and family, Gary, Samantha, Sharon, Sassy and Pierre, Lisa, Ruth and Teddy, Stan, Gardner Lane, Dorothy Nichols, Burke and Carol, Drewston and family, Melanie and Kent, Rachel and Joshua, Frank, Brandon, Susan and Robert, Roseanne and Jack, Kathleen, Amy, Wanda, Susan and Dan, Kevin and Karen, and Brian. Let us pray. O come, O come, Emmanuel. 
O oh, desire of our nations, free us from the division that separates nations and peoples and fill the leaders of the world with a passion for peace. And we pray for God's peace and protection to be, on, be upon those who are in active duty in our military. Joshua Watkins, Ryan Bain, Anna Murphy, Brooke Calloway, Andrew Harkins, and Kyle Huber. Let us pray. O come, O come, Emmanuel. O come, Emmanuel, lift up those who are lowly and raise from the dead those who have fallen asleep. Let us pray. O come, O come, O come, Emmanuel. May we continue to proclaim our trust in the Lord's constant watch as we add to those prayers and petitions. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Show the girls how <coughs> the little church here works. Mary, uh, Mother Robin told us that the little arrow goes to the week we're in. So could you find third Sunday of Advent? Third Sunday of Advent. So it's going to be one of the little purple ones. Well, now Advent, the cross is going to be, is there a star there? Okay, so it's the, there should be four purple ones before the star. Well, there shouldn't be four green ones, so that's a little odd. So we'll have to look at that later. <laughs> Do you see a little group of four purple? Okay, so we're on the third purple. Yeah, isn't that 
fun. So I'm going to show you some pictures, and I'm going to ask you what you see in these. So when you look at this picture, what do you see? This is we're going to find out what we know about Jesus in these pictures. So what do you see, Aiden? What do you see? Joseph and Mary. Okay. Do you see Joseph? So you see a mommy? Do you see a mommy in that picture? And do you see a daddy? And do you see a baby? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So this is baby Jesus. So this story tells us that Jesus was just like us. He was born a baby just like we are. So he was a real person, and that's what we know. But he was also a really special child. So we're going to put this right here so we know that Jesus was a little baby born into a family like you were. You were born into a family. Yeah, and so that's an important thing. Now, what do we see about this picture? What do you see in this picture? What do you see? Ooh, you're looking really hard. What do you see? Do you see a little boy? Who is that? That's Jesus when he was a little boy, and it tells us that he went to temple because these are people who look like they go, like our church, but they went to a different place called the temple. And he looks pretty interested, doesn't he? So it tells us that Jesus learned a lot about the scriptures, about how to find God by being with other people, and he was really interested in that. So that tells us that we could do that too. We could go to church. Oh, I'm sorry, sweetie. And we could learn about God through our scriptures. <gasps> and what do you see in this one? Jesus as an adult. Excellent. And you know what else do you see? What else do you see? Well, this yeah, see, this is a dove. And this is his baptism. See all this white light and everything? <gasps> the Holy Spirit just came upon Jesus in a really, really special way. And that happens to us too when we're baptized. The Holy Spirit comes. So Jesus. We're doing what Jesus did and asked us to do so we can feel the presence of the Spirit. Now, what do you think this picture's about? Jesus. This is picture's about Jesus. And what about Jesus? Jesus, what do you see in this picture? He's looking at his hands. There's a huge amount of energy and light and all of that. So that also tells us that Jesus has a certain amount of power that there's this wonderful sense of who he is and that we can bring that into the world too. So let's look at our next one. What do we see in this? So this is an interesting picture. This is really hard to figure out. So what else do you see? You see someone's hands. And where are those hands? They're on the eyes. So this is actually Jesus putting his hands on someone's eyes who could not see. So, I, it's a funny picture, Peter, I, I agree, but he put his hands right on the eyes and it healed that person's eyes. And that's really important because that's what they said the Messiah would do, make the blind people able to see. So here's Jesus doing that. There are lots of ways we can do that in the world too. Okay, so this one, what do we know about this one? And the Holy Eucharist. So what do, what do you think this is? So this is bread. So you're going to have some special bread and wine today. And this is a way that Jesus said, this is a way you can always be with me. When you eat the bread and you drink the wine and remember me, my presence is with you. So we're going to do that really soon. And that's really cool. Now this one's really hard. So anybody who knows. Okay, eight things he knows, right? Jesus at, at the table giving bread. Well, I think that's true. So here they have bread and wine. These are disciples. But this is actually after Jesus died. But he came back so people still knew who he was. His presence was with him. And so that's when everyone said, oh, even though Jesus died, Jesus is still with him. Are you wondering Jesus. about this? Yeah. yeah. Well, this is a little mark of when Jesus died, his hand got hurt. And so he, I know it is sad. And so, but when Jesus came back, he showed that to say, look what happened to me, but I am still here with you every time you break bread and drink that wine. So we're going to do that today. In just a few minutes, we're going to eat bread and wine and remember that Jesus is right here with us. What do you think of that? Does that sound pretty exciting? Okay, good. Well, let's put these things back, and then we'll go, and we will do this. So what we're going to do, yeah, you can put these back here.
Christ to God. Thank you. Because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn, to proclaim the glory of your name.
salvation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in those last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and the Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. The night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with Andrew and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Thank you. 
Now we join our hearts with those who are engaging in our worship at home through, uh, through uh, Facebook Live as we pray the prayer for spiritual communion. So let us pray this together. Dearest Jesus, we believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament, and since we all cannot at this time receive communion in the consecrated bread and wine, we pray you to come into our hearts. We unite ourselves with you and embrace you with our hearts, souls, and minds. Let nothing separate us from you. Let us serve you in this life until, by your grace, we come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Amen. And now we pray our post-communion prayer. So let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth the people, forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. 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 Amen.